But we've got one more thing. Actually, it's one more hobby. Um, so, of course, we're talking about Apple TV. Now, we introduced Apple TV four years ago. And we've sold a lot of them, but it's never been a huge hit. And uh, nor is any other competitive product. Nothing's really hit in the living room yet. But we talk to people that use Apple TVs, and they love them. They absolutely love them and use them a lot. So what have we learned in the last four years? What have we learned from our users? Well, we've learned a lot. The first thing is the number one, two, and three thing they want is they want Hollywood movies and TV shows whenever they want them. It's that simple. It's not really complicated. They want Hollywood movies and TV shows. They don't want amateur hour. They want professional content. And they want everything in HD. The HD revolution is over. It happened. HD won. Everybody wants HD. <laughs> they like to pay lower prices for content. Right? More, the lower the prices, the more they're going to watch. They don't want a computer on their TV. They have computers. They go to their widescreen TVs for entertainment, not to have another computer. This is a hard one for people in the computer industry to understand, but it's really easy for consumers to understand. They get it. They don't want to manage storage. When you buy a bunch of movies and TV shows, you have to manage them because you don't want to throw them away. You just bought them. And so you have storage management problems. Your hard disk starts to fill up. What are you going to do? People don't want to think about managing storage. They just want to watch movies and TV shows. And they don't want to sync to a computer. Most of them haven't even figured out what that is. <laughs> they want to pull some content off their computer, but they don't want the syncing stuff. It's too complicated. And they want whatever hardware we have to be silent, cool, and small. Right? Not too hard to understand. So this is what we've learned. And it's, it's really quite a bit different than a lot of other companies think. And either we're right or we're wrong, but this is what we've heard from our customers. And so we've made something new for them. This is the current Apple TV. We are introducing the second generation of Apple TV today, and this is what it looks like. It's a fourth the size. You can hold it in the palm of your hand. I have one here, actually. I mean, look at this. That's it. It's this little tiny box. Around the back, it's really simple. It's got the power supply built in it. There's no power brick, and all you need is plug in a power cord. One HDMI connector to go to your TV, which brings digital video and 5.1 surround sound. And if you have a terrestrial Ethernet, you can plug it in. Most of us don't, so we built in Wi-Fi, 802.11n. So you don't even need a hard network connection. It's really simple. And you plug in these two cables, usually, the power and the HDMI, and it's on your Wi-Fi network, and that's all you have to worry about. It's got a great remote with it, really beautiful aluminum remote. And it's real easy. It's about music. TV shows, and a lot of people like to stream their music from their computer to it as well. It's all HD when the content's available. We've gone to the rental model for this. There's no purchases on Apple TV anymore. You rent everything. The prices are more affordable. And guess what? There's no storage problem. Because you don't store things anymore. You just rent them. And the rental prices are so inexpensive that you can afford to watch something several times, and it's still cheaper than if you would have bought it. You stream content from your computer if you want it. Photos, videos, 
music. There's no syncing required. It's super easy to just stream stuff right up from your computer. And when you stream photos in or get photos from somewhere else, stunning photo slideshows. And it's silent, cool, and tiny. So what about content? iTunes has the largest online library of movies to rent in the world. The largest library of HD movies in the world. So you can rent first run HD movies for $4.99, the day and date when they come out on DVD. And the library is great. The movies are great. And they get even cheaper as time goes on. But for first run movies, the day they come out on DVD, $4.99. Now to rent, to buy TV shows used to be $2.99 for HD TV shows. People said that was a little too expensive. To rent HD TV shows, they're going to be 99 cents. 99 cents. Now, and remember, these are commercial free as well, which is nice. Now, this is a big step for some of the studios to make, and not all of them wanted to take the step with us. So we've got ABC and Fox taking the step with us, going to be offering their shows for 99 cents. We think the rest of the studios will see the light and get on board pretty fast with us. So we're very excited to offer ABC and Fox shows for just 99 cent rentals. In addition, in addition to renting, in addition to renting Hollywood first run movies and TV shows, you can also, if you're a Netflix subscriber, stream content from Netflix's streaming library right on Apple TV. And they have a large collection of movies you can stream for free if you're a Netflix subscriber. You can also watch anything you want on YouTube, including all the HD stuff that they have now. It's really exciting. You can get photos off of Flickr, and you can get video and photos off of MobileMe. And again, you can stream content off your computer, Mac or PC. Music, which is very popular, photos, and videos. So, this is what the UI looks like. It's really simple. Movies, TV shows, internet, computers, and settings. Go into top movies. These are the kinds of movies you see. All first-run movies. You want to rent one? Go ahead, $4.99. Literally, single click, you're renting it. And you can see a synopsis of the movie, the actors, director, producers. Uh, you also can get user ratings, and you can see the tomato meter up there for the first time. And viewers also that rented this film also rented these. Now, if you want to see more detail, you can just scroll down. And you can get detail on the actors, what other films they've been in, et cetera, the director. And you can actually read reviews from Rotten Tomatoes. So for this film, see the Rolling Stone magazine. Philadelphia Inquirer, Toronto Star, the New York Times, and decide which movies you want to watch. It's really great for watching movies. So let's move on to TV shows. Again, top TV shows. You select one you want to rent, click a button, 99 cents, you've rented the show. It's that simple. And you can start watching these things generally within seconds of renting them. So that's TV shows. On the internet, you can watch, if you're a Netflix subscriber, you can watch films from their streaming library, YouTube, thousands of podcasts, audio and video podcasts, mobile meet content, Flickr, lots of internet radio stations, again, all available right on Apple TV. This gives you a feel for Netflix. And my own computer, I can get in there and listen to all my music or any other content I have on the computer. So this gives you a feel for the UI of Apple TV. And again, it all comes out of this tiny little box. It's pretty amazing, and I'd love to show it to you now. I happen to have one right here. And uh, you can see a kind of slideshows you can get on it. It's even more fun when they're your own pictures. Um, but really nice slideshows. And uh, so let me go ahead and 
Just go to the home screen. Here we are. So again, top movies, TV shows, internet, computers, and setup. So let me go into top movies right here. And this is all live. These are the top movies we have. So, you know, let me go uh, rent one. Iron Man. Here's Iron Man right here. I can watch a free preview, of course. I can see all the films that other people rented that rented Iron Man 2. And I can just uh, scroll down here if I want to. And again, I can, Robert Downey Jr., I can see what other films he was in. These are all the other films, or Gwyneth Paltrow. I can look at customer reviews, and I can look at the Rotten Tomato reviews. It's pretty nice. So I can rent this in HD for $4.99 just by clicking the button. I'm about to rent it, and here I go. And within a few seconds, it's going to tell me it's ready to start watching. And I can watch it later, or I can watch it now. So press play to watch. I'm just going to press play, and let's get started. OK. So that's movies. Let's go on to TV shows. Favorite TV shows? So I get to decide which are my favorite TV shows and flag them, and they all show up in one place here. And each season, it shows me how many episodes have been broadcast that I haven't watched yet. So uh, let's say uh, for, I can also rearrange these things. So let's say Glee is the most important show to me. I can just hold my button down. It starts to jiggle, and I can move it over here. So that's fine. I'll always see Glee. And there's one episode I haven't seen. And I can go in here and say, OK, let me go ahead and rent that episode for 99 cents. And let's play it. All right, there you go. That's Glee. So that's TV shows. On the internet, again, we've got all these great things that you can get. And if you're a Netflix subscriber, again, you can get all the stuff for free. So let's go into Netflix. And again, I'll go down to my see what's in my instant queue. And I can watch any one of these movies for free if I'm a Netflix subscriber. It's pretty cool. This is by far the best implementation of Netflix, too. It's the easiest to use, and the quality is great. So it, it finds my computer on the net. If there were more, it would just list them all. And uh, I could, you know, again, stream my music or whatever. But I'm going to go down to Photos and uh, so I can say, great, let me uh, go into Events here. Australian Vacation. Let's see what that is. And again, just shows, you, shows us some of the photos. And we can say, great, show me a slideshow. You get the idea. So that gives you an overview of Apple TV. Now, let me show you something else that's really cool. We talked about AirPlay before. And AirPlay's coming in November with iOS 4.2. And one of the things we can do with AirPlay is we can stream content from an iOS device to an Apple TV. And so I've got my iPad here. And let me go back to uh, my video player. And I got one of my favorite movies here up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it. Now, when I'm playing it, I can bring up the controls. And you'll see right there by the volume control, there's a new button. Whoops, my way. And I can just push it like this. And now I can decide where to go ahead and stream it to. And I'll say the family room Apple TV, which is this one. And so in a second or two, 
There we go. Right off the side panel. So, you're going to be able to be watching a movie, walk into your living room, and push a button and watch the rest of it on your Apple TV. You're going to be able to come home with a bunch of photos on your iPhone, push a button on your iPhone, and see a slideshow on your Apple TV. It's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> so, Apple TV. Now, we have content. We have content on iTunes in six countries, US, Canada, UK, France, Germany, and Australia. And we've got more countries coming later on this year. The price of Apple TV was $229. One of the, some feedback we got from our users was they'd like to see that more affordable. Two to $300 price range was just not something that a lot of users were willing to experiment with when they didn't quite know what this new age of digital television was going to be all about. And so we're going to lower the price from $299 for the old Apple TV to just $99 for the new Apple TV. So the new Apple TV is available later this month in about four weeks, and you can pre-order today. So that is the new Apple TV.